So this week we're going to tie a uh, Euro style jigged Prince Nymph. Uh, this is a finished one here in the vise. This is um, on a size 10 hook. Uh, just the regular A-Rex jig hook. Um, <clears throat> so this is how it's going to present itself in the water. This one's obviously done. I'm going to pop this one out now. And I will tie one up with you guys here. Okay. So that one's out. We're going to come in with our <clears throat> hook and bead. Hook and bead is a A-Rex 550 jig hook, size 10. With a 3.5 millimeter slotted tungsten bead thread we're going to use on this one is uh vivis a dot thread in uh the red color so i'm just gonna attach on our thread here and put in my lead just like uh, i've done on previous videos it's uh this lead is 025 lead just a little piece of it i just use this to uh keep our bead in place and start the uh taper of her body so come up front push that all the way in to the front of our bead get it directly on top here I'm gonna cut a little bit of a ramp in this here just so it tapers down for our body It'll just help all of our materials move over top of it and we're gonna bring our thread all the way to the back just past the bend of our hook here and I'm gonna build a little bit of a dam just a, a bump of thread pretty much we're gonna come in with our first material <clears throat> so for this one I'm gonna be using two different colors by us I'm using uh, Prince Nip brown color for the tail and then a uh, white by for our to mimic a wing casing here okay we have these they're splayed apart and we're going to tie these down about maybe a half inch a little less than a half inch i'm just gonna trap them with a couple wraps move them to where we want them i'm gonna cut off some of these uh tags here leave a little bit just to tie in upper body we're gonna move our thread in slightly loose and then we'll come back over top tighter and we'll push take our thread right back to a little bump of thread there then you can see these will uh, splay out a little bit more because they're against the bump okay we're gonna come in with our next material which is going to be uh, some uni soft wire this is a small size the color is just silver I'm just gonna tie that in for our uh, counter rib after our peacock so that's gonna be our next material is peacock curl I'm gonna take six of my longer fibers watch out for ones like this one here like that's just gonna break as you spin it <laughs> it's a peacock curl is not the uh most durable material that's why we tie in extra pieces and uh whenever i use peacock curl i always make sure to use a uh a counter see i just broke one there <laughs> so now we're down to five And cut off our extra we're gonna bring all this peacock up together with my fingers give it a little bit of a spin and stick this in a hackle player now and uh, it'll uh, spin a little bit better it's just uh can be kind of hard on them I like to just do it by hand it's uh, easier for me and I feel like I have more control so we're just keeping those spun together and using it basically like a chenille I'm just gonna I never remove my thread all the way forward. Move all your, th your thread all the way forward to the eye. <laughs> Sorry. Keep tapering this up. Do we get to our bead? We're gonna tie it off right on top with one, two wraps. Cut off our extra. 
and then we went clockwise with our or with our peacock curl. So we're going to go counterclockwise with our counter ribbing wire here. So the opposite way. We're going to come back through, and this counter rib, just like I said before, it's going to hold this material. If one of the pieces of peacock breaks, it's still stuck in there. It's not uh, going to unravel and stick out to the side like uh, they like to do. <laughs> so just counter rib that up, came up front. We're going to tie this off and just clean up this head area, like our collar area a little bit. So we have a nice place to tie down our white bias. And that will be our next material. A lot of people like to use a soft collar or soft hackle head or like a collar in the front here on these this uh on print their prints names. I don't. I use it just like this and it catches just as many fish and it's easier for me <laughs> easier and faster for me to tie. So I'm going to tie this one on my side. You're not going to be able to see much. But uh, you'll see a lot better when I tie this one on. So the other thing with these, uh, with our side ones, you can see there's a, a curve to this material. So we want that. <clears throat> we want the curve in our bia to go out away from the body. So uh, what I actually do is I tie these in backwards. So a trick uh, old timer in our... Uh, Trout Unlimited showed me actually. So I want it to end up like this. So I'm going to flip it over, tie it in forward, measure it the same length as my other white bias. I'm just going to secure those down with a few wraps and we're going to cut out our extra on each side. Cut out. Now I'm just going to spin on my thread a little bit. I'm going to push these back to where I want them. Just by doubling these or doing it this way, tying them in forwards and then moving them back, I just feel like you have a lot better control over where they end up. Okay, now I'm just going to. We got those back. Build up a little bit of a nice thread. Uh, Red thread collar here. And then you can half hitch or whip finish at the end. Pull our material up top. Or our thread, sorry. Snip that off. And I'm going to hit this with some UV. This one I'm using uh, solar as thin. Just going to put one dab up here on these thread wraps. And that's it. So, uh, you'll notice I, a little bit differently. I tie my uh, my white biots, so my wing casing. I tie those on the sides with this pattern. So you can see there, uh, no matter if it's upside down or right side up in the water, you can still see your wing casing. And that uh, just allows the fish to see it. Uh, some guys will tie it on top on a jig style prince nymph like up here or on the bottom which you shouldn't see if the nymph is uh riding the right way in the water but i just like to do it this way if there's one on each side then no matter what position the nymph is in in the water you're going to see one of those uh the wing casing biots and that's just another attractant on this pattern here uh, i use this pattern a ton as just a general attractant uh all over the country honestly you can do different thread collars different color biots and it'll change the fly uh, a lot and <clears throat> yeah once again this is our uh jig style prince nymph uh use a lot euro nymphing so uh thank you for watching the video guys if uh you'd like to see any other euro patterns uh i think eventually it's going to be a uh i'm gonna do a separate series for the nymphing videos just because it seems like Certain people are interested in nymphs and certain people are interested in streamers. So yeah, I'm just going to try and not force uh, <laughs> the nymphs on everyone. Uh, Euro nymphing is extremely effective, but it also uh, is quite taboo in the industry here. A lot of people uh, don't like Euro nymphing for one reason or another, but most of those people... I don't think have actually tried your own thing. So <laughs> once again, sorry for being a little long-winded here. Uh, 
this is my uh, jig style print sniff. Have a good one. Thank you for watching the video. Please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for uh, updates. And we're uh, hoping to do some giveaways here too on some of these next um, fly tying videos. I just want to do it to uh, you know give back to you guys and ensure that you keep watching our videos and the channel keeps on growing. Thank you. Have a good one.